Stockpile Hobbies. Hey, welcome back to Stockpile Hobbies. So, I want to do a quick video this week. It's going to be pretty short compared to some of the other videos. Um, I'm going to go over how well these two cars here are performing. So, I want to test out this lot of slot cars that I got off of Facebook Marketplace. A number of them are HP7. Uh, I might be selling those chassis. I'm not, I don't really have any interest in HP7 chassis. Uh, not, not the performance I'm really good with, and my son either ends up a little too young for that. Um, he likes a little more intense racing. Uh, I do want to figure out what to do with all these slot cars. I want to get them off the bench here. There's quite a number there. Um, maybe something up here on the wall I can hang to uh, show them off and use them while we're down here with, with the track. And then also figure out what the next steps are going to be with the track here. If we're going to start getting into uh, HO scale modeling, building a city around the track. Nice. Adding down some uh, different boards and things to use there. So... Um, Try and uh, see what's out there, what options I have. I don't know if I want to use foam board, if I want to get the particle board, go crazy. Um, let me know in the comments if you got any suggestions what to do here. I got a lot of open space. I think I can do some pretty cool uh, scale buildings and things. Um, my eBay sales are going pretty good, so I can probably fund it all. Uh, just might be slow going, which is fine, but uh, just look for some ideas here what to do with this. First up here is a Tyco 440 chassis, wide pan. Uh, this is a Nissan 300Z uh, twin turbo body on it. It's got a really good paint job. Uh, I don't want to mess with this one. I like how this one looks. So does this Enzo. It's his favorite color blue. Uh, this car performed pretty good on the track. We'll be trying it out again. Uh, I think it needs some tires. They're pretty, they're pretty hard. Um, it, it was a little loose. I think if this stuck a little better, it'd be great. It's got a great chassis. I'll be keeping this one and using the chassis with some other bodies. Uh, next up here is the Indy car. And I believe yep, that's an AFX chassis there. I uh, don't think it's a four gear. It's just a long chassis. Uh, it's pretty good. It's ran pretty good actually too. I think I just need some new tires on it. Um, I think I am going to paint this one. I'm going to look up the price of the cha of the body here first. See what the what it's worth. Uh, it is missing the part of the spoiler there on top, but uh, maybe a, a new paint job here as well would be nice on this. Um, I might want to try to find a way though to preserve the helmet, uh, mask that off somehow. It's in great condition and. I wouldn't be able to repaint that as good. I don't have the skills, but the body I can definitely do something with. I got some pinstriping or something else I can do here. Pretty cool with this and do a cool color with it. Uh, maybe start a, a racing team like the with the Porsche here. Start them both doing a black and gold series. And next here, I think this is a, I want to say it's a Grand Prix. I don't think it's a Grand Am. I, know, I could be wrong, but again, another HP7 chassis. Uh, this one ran good. It, it lights up actually. There it is. There's the, the bulb on it. Um, I am thinking about doing LEDs on the other cars. I'll get to that later. Um, the, the wheels here are pretty good. The tires are shot. Again, I'm not happy with these chassis. I'm going to probably just sell them on a lot. This body, uh, some of the name is worn off there. Um, a lot of scratches and dings. I think I'm going to strip this one down, take all the decals off it, and we'll be giving this one a paint job. Uh, we'll get the window out of it as well. Next up is the National Guard. This is a lifelike body. I never ran one of these before. This thing booked across the track. It was a fast car. Um, it has pretty good traction. It's got these little, I think these are little magnets here for it. Um, I was really impressed with how fast this car went. Uh, this one, I think I'm going to experiment with. Let's see what we can do. Uh, the body spoilers in great condition. Uh, it looks like a, it's an Impala, and we are going to repaint this sucker. We're going to give this a cool paint job. And then we have the old IROC here without the windows. Uh, my order came in from Slot Car Central in Syracuse, New York, and this should go right in. Let's see how that goes. I am going to paint the, the windows black. It won't be orange when we repaint this car, too. Uh, this car is pretty shot. Uh, I love these F-body cars. I have three F-body cars throughout all the years. No Camaros, but I am a fan. So we will be giving this car some special attention. See what we come up with. And so the window looks really good. Fits in perfect. It's great. We'll black that out and then give this car a cool pink job. We'll think about what colors we're going to do. So and this again, this was on a, another HP7 chassis. Uh, no shoes on this one. Uh, I do have some though. I, can, I could do it up, but uh, I think I'm just going to sell these. But let's put these on the dyno. Let's see how they perform. So let's get a good baseline for two of my cars that I think are pretty good. Uh, this is an Auto World X-Traction type of car. 
and the other one is a Tyco uh, 440 nar narrow pan here. So let's see how they do. Let's see. So I got them both about almost. Now the voltage fluctuates, but up between seven and nine volts. We'll call it eight volts, and we're looking at about. 0.19 amps on the Trans Am and 0 0.24, 0 0.23 over on the, the Tyco one now. So, not bad for a baseline. So, most of these cars run really good on the track. Now, before we get to the, the new Facebook cars, let's test out two of the cars that I thought were struggling here. I have a narrow pan uh, 440 here on the Lambo body. And I have an old narrow pan um, glow in the dark curve huggers uh, edition uh, Corvette. Actually, we're going to do the Corvettes together because the red one here that I have runs really good on the track, and the blue one seems to have no power compared to the red. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that tells the story right there. Um, 0.27 amps is drawing, and 0.19 amps over on the, the red fat. Uh, the lower the amps, usually the, fat, the faster uh, performance you see on the track. Uh, the motor is experiencing less uh, resistance going through it. Now I have the yellow Lamborghini on there. Uh, it is also a narrow pan. It's one of the curve hugger glow in the dark cars as well. It just have the Lamborghini body on it. And even that, compared to this red one, I have, which is also, you see it has the glow and dark rims on it, same, same chassis. This one is like um, a good car. This one gets around the track very easily, nice and smooth, good handling. This one, not so much. It's got new tires on it, it's just not keeping up the performance. But uh, on the bench here, the bolts seem to be running pretty good. Um, I was thinking about tearing these guys down, uh, cleaning the brushes, uh, the contacts. They've been cleaned before, they just, just, that's just from a couple laps. Just that wear and tear on it. And uh, same on the, the Lambo. Um, so these might be worth tearing down. I can see inside there in the com, it looks a little dirty in there. Let's see if they'll pick that up on camera. Yeah. Let's see how the this one looks. This one looks a little dirty as well in there. Got the brushes contact, which it would. That's where they're, they're rubbing. Uh, it's funny because the one that's performing really well looks even worse in comparison there. So I think how you really use a cleaning, but uh, one at a time, everyone's got to take a number, right? So I have a lifelike car and I have an HP7. And wow, look at that. Point one, point 11, point 13 amps on the draw. That's why it's so quick. When I said I saw this go on the track, it was really booking. Uh, that's great. Uh, the HP7 over here, uh, having a hard time. Uh, point, point 0.30 amps. So uh, I don't know if the, I'm sure the lights have some draw on that as well. So yeah, some of the performance. It is. I'm really impressed with this light light. Wish the magnets were better on it. It would uh, go a little bit fat, handle better in the turns, but on a straight line. This thing can move. This might even be good for drag racing. That's another thing I contemplate doing is building a, a drag a drag strip track. Um, my cousin was talking about getting into this too. His uh, his body from uh, Jim's custom rod shop didn't come yet for his uh, custom demon body I'm going to do, but it's going to be a four gear car. And um, thinking about he was thinking about getting into it. I'm thinking maybe if I got the the curved race track, if he wants to do the straight line track, that'd be kind of cool. We have one of each of each of our places, but. Uh, See what happens. So now we have a wide pan 440 here, and the old AFX pan. I don't know if that's just gonna how this is gonna dyno here. So I'm gonna take this off the body off. Test this one. The, the long nose on the Indy car is interfering. All right, let's try it now. Uh, yeah. 0 0.19, 0 0.20 amps on the 440 wide pin. That's great. And even on the old AFX here, 0 0.20, 0 0.24 amps. Uh, 
both appear to be great performing uh, chassis here. So, I'll be keeping both of these and the lifelike chassis. And I'm going to ditch the HP7 chassis. I'll put a, an auction up on uh, Facebook or eBay or something. And I do have some more over here that are in like the, the parts graveyard over here. I got uh, two more HP7s, got good axles and uh, wheels. Tires are shot, of course, but uh, motors are burned out. I think I could get new canned motors, but I'm not happy with the, uh, the lack of uh, magnetism on these cars, so to say. Um, I do have a 440 here that I have to refill too, which it might be worth taking maybe some of the parts off of uh, the yellow Lambo that's underperforming and rebuilding this car up. So this chassis, I'm gonna get this one going again. And then uh, recently, uh, the, the blue Porsche are customized. I still gotta get a window for that. These Porsche windows are really hard to find just by themselves without having to get a car. Uh, this car was having a couple of issues. So I was gonna check this out here and uh, again in there, that com looks pretty dark in there where the brushes are. So uh, I'm gonna clean this up, see how this, see how that goes. Looking for some ideas here. You know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. What's be the best way to approach doing this right? If it, should it be particle board underneath, maybe a quarter inch, or um, just doing some foam board underneath and just laying it on top of it. Probably for stability, I think the particle board would be the way to go. But uh, as far as you know, HO scale buildings, what are things to avoid? I see they got you know on the cheap side of things, they have just like the regular cardboard cutout buildings and things. Are, are those worth doing? Are they chintzy? And you know, obviously they're not going to hold up to uh, being smashed into and everything. But uh, got a lot of opportunity here to do types of buildings. You know, tall ones, short ones. Um, like service stations uh, over here, parking lots, set up the cars, um, you know, like uh, all types of things. And if I do the particle board, I'll be able to extend past the edge of the shelving here and uh, I'll have more room so the table, the track layout can grow even larger than what it is now. Uh, you know, so leave me some comments, leave me some suggestions, looking for some feedback here. Loving everyone, thank you for all the thumbs ups on all the videos and the subscribers. Uh, really appreciate everyone taking the time there to hit that red button. Uh, it goes a long way. We're at about 120 plus subscribers. Got to get to 1,000. Thanks for watching this episode, everyone. Please subscribe and like the videos. Keep having fun, everyone.